Okay, what we're here to do today is test out some of the different screens, some of the different variations to be able to run rocks and material and everything through the sluice so you don't have to pre-classify. This is one of our screens. This is probably the smallest, the most simplest one. Uh, we tried this before on our last test by making a solid aluminum ramp onto the punch plate and we had like a little flame and a buildup of material underneath the classifier. Well, we want the sluice to flow perfectly. So now we've changed it to a screen and uh, going on to another screen so we can just dump buckets right on top of it and have it carry it through. Now we also have another one here where we tried a solid plate. Again, we are getting a little bit more buildup. So now we go with the plate classifier to get that uh, flow going right over the uh, indicator mat, which is the ribbed rubber, and then through the sluice. So we keep on trying all these different things. We want to make it easier for people because the key to it is moving more material. And by moving more material, you're going to find more goals. We took out a lot of the ripples here and we're changing it around. Since we're using a classifier that's going over most of the box, we want this lower area to pretty much work on the classified material, on the finer gold. So we've got the ribbed rubber, which comes stock in the box. And we've also got this in here, which comes in all the boxes. But we changed the ripple to a much heavier um, expanded metal than we normally use, a little taller too. And we put a section of Miracle Mat because this is all protected by the classifier. And the classifier is only allowing smaller material to go through here. Now the larger rocks jump off about right here, which go through the taller ripples, and that's what you call your nugget trap, but it has to be a pretty big nugget to actually make it over the classifier. Stuff of that specific gravity just likes to stick to it. So we're gonna take it down in the stream. We're gonna try out some of these different screen variations and see what works good. I'm gonna go ahead and dump in and have a couple buckets repaired. It's all unclassified material. You can literally take a shovel and shovel directly off the paint in the sluice box. But we've got some better looking material here. So let's see how, how the sluice is set up for us. So far so good, Matt. It's classifying fast. What? You know, the screen, so far I think I like the screen better than the other one. You know, I said this earlier in the video, but uh, I like when I can stand up and feed a box and not have to bend over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend over and make a quick adjustment. And again, this only takes a couple seconds compared to a conventional screw box. How easy is that? Let's want some more material. What I, what I wanted to uh, show you too, there are a couple rocks hanging up in the box, but that's okay. If a rock sits on top of the classifier, comes a couple of seconds, it's no problem because what happens is the water disseminates and breaks down the clays and the dirt clods. So it's okay to have a few rocks resting for a couple of seconds. You just give them a little push and they go flying right through it. This thing's fast. Not exaggerated. I think this might be our screen. Well, we have to see how well, the material both, deposits underneath it. I'm impressed so far. And again, a couple rocks loading up at the front is not a problem because that allows the material to allow the water to break down the clays and the dirt clods. Teddy? 
You know, with the heavier leg brackets, it seems to be a lot more stable than it was yeah, last time. But you know, that's kind of it's actually, the genesis of fixing anything. You learn by trial and error. I think I like the wider stance too, don't you? We I do. We were about here and here, now we're here. I think the wider stance makes it more stable. Yeah. You know what? It is so easy to adjust. What do you think, Bob? Yeah, I like it. It's impressive, isn't it? Actually, bring it out of the water flow and let's uh, pop the screen off just for a second. I will, Pat. There we go. Now you can see in here the miracle mat. You got nothing but but your finer black sand. Remember the miracle mat doesn't look that great in the loose box, but when you classify it under controlled conditions, it does the best job in the world on that really fine flower gold. So let's see what it looks like underneath. Wow. Well, that was right. That's, That's just what we good. wanted. And you know what? <laughs> That's a simple and easy fix for <laughs> any A52 sluice. That's a simpler version. This screen is working good, Patrick. I think this is working. Okay, well, you know what? We should try the other one still, but this we is... We have to still push the limit. Yeah, I mean, that, that did the trick. All right, I went ahead and I just slid the bucket underneath the back leg. That, that way when I do my cleanup, I'm sure I'm not going to lose the material and it spills over the side. You know, I, I, I bring this up all the time, but this latch system we have with these heavy-duty latches, Pat, they're the bomb. There's nothing better. Nothing works as easy to clamp and release. I love this system. Here we go. That was easy? Yep. All right. You know, it sure is nice to have everything at a, a, a elevated level. I don't have to bend over as much. <laughs> So, you know, if you got a pad things, back, these that, little things do make a difference. So yeah. You can see the, the load on that ripple looks pretty good. And we are pounding some material through it, so that's pretty good looking. So there's always a trick to cleaning out the miracle mat. Now you're cooking. But you can see how it's held on, especially back in the deep. In the, the back eddies, the grooves, and really holds on to the, the heavy to the heavy black sand. And even this, this section of the carpet here is working perfect. Um, see, we use, I've had some comments, people ask me, why don't we use miner's moss at this point? And what happens with the miner's moss, it does a really good job on a bigger ripple, but when you have a small ripple and you have small expanded metal, it can, the miner's moss can actually pucker up through the expanded metal and you lose some of the, the eddy action of, of the expanded metal. So I'm actually having a little better luck with the carpet. Sitting, and then another thing with miner's moss, it fills up with light sand as well as black sand when you're using it in the low velocity water. And if you look at this, that's black. There's very little blonde sand in it. Wash it a little slow, see if you see any color in there. I do see a little teeny pinhead piece here, and maybe one here. But okay. my glasses on, I can't see very well. You're doing a good job, Teddy. Wash the sides of the inside of the sluice too, Mark. Now you're cooking. That's pretty 
easy. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna put it back together now. It almost looks like you know what you're doing, Mark. Almost. <laughs> That's pretty quick. It's so it's so easy now. And these legs, I love it. Teddy loves it. Yeah, we're in a good spot. Check it out, Liz. Wow. I think we're going to stay here for a while. This is, this is fun. You get it? Well, you can see here Patrick and I are getting ready to go out this weekend. You can see we use a multitude of different roof boards, carpets, classifier screens. And every time we go out, we try something new. Even in this shot, you can see a new uh, intake grizzly for one of the screens. We're kind of curious to see how this works. Anyways, uh, with just luck, we're going at this weekend, and we'll try to document most of it if we can. Take care.